a scientific skepticism activist. She is a fellow of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, winner of the 2017 James Randi Educational Foundation Award, and publishes with Skeptical Inquirer magazine. Her work in exposing mediums was featured in a 2019 New York Times expose. A long-time relationship with mentalist Mark Edward has led to ex many exposures of mediums who Mark coined Greek vampires. Ladies and gentlemen, your friend of mine, Susan. I am a little nervous at doing this, and I'm not a nervous person. I do presentations all over the world, and I talk about psychics often. So the only reason I'm a little nervous about this is because it was Susan Williams, and, um, and it was a crazy idea to bring me here to do this because I, I'm not a mentalist, I'm not a magician, but I did hang around with Mark Edward. We were a couple for 15 years. And for those who don't know, Mark died about five weeks ago. So, and he died on National International Psychic Day, by the way. So, um, good, for, good for Mark. So what I'm going to do is, normally when I give presentations on psychics, I'm speaking to an audience of skeptics who already know my work, and usually what happens is I'm just updating them on what's new. So you're an audience that I don't quite know how you feel about this kind of stuff, um, I am not going to have time for q and A. I'm going to eat up every minute that I'm given, but I'm approachable. You can talk to me in, at my table, Mark Edwards' table, or you can see me afterwards eating, or you can talk to me on Facebook. Please friend me, and we can have, hopefully, a respectful conversation. All the clips you're going to see are very tight. I have cut them way down for time. All the videos are pretty much available, places where you'll be able to see them. And you can get them on your website, uh, my website, Mark's website. And if you want to take photos, please take as many photos as you want because there'll be a lot of things that are going to come up quickly and you might want to go back and look at them again. And um, so what this is in, in general is I'm starting out with uh, the history of Mark a little bit. Uh, this is a man that you do not know, um, maybe did not know of. So, all right, so here we start. And, uh, if, you know, remember this is Susan and Andrew's idea. All right. So Mark Edward and all the photos I pretty much I think I've taken. Do you know Mark Edward as a magician? Okay. And some of you may know him as a mentalist. And here we are in Edinburgh and then um, the one in the chair um, by himself. That was for weird or what. And then some of you may know him as a performer. And this is one of, I love this photo of him as a child. Well, I won't get too emotional with the photos, but you know. And this is Mark the Magic Castle I took. It was his last performance there. And this is taken on my work. This is what I did for a living for a very long time. And this is Mark and I. We've known each other 15 years, and thank you for bringing me a box of cleaners. <laughs> this is James Randi, who is a dear friend. He wrote the foreword to Mark's book. And as you may or may not know, we, we um, and Mark, and James Randi was a, a friend of mine as well. In fact, I am a nonprofit, and all the work I do on psychics is due to the money he gave me to be able to continue the work um, working with psychics. And I also do some other things, but. This is Mark and Randy in 2012 at Dragon Con. Um, a lot of people have problems with it. Oh, a lot of people. <laughs> so this is, a lot of people don't get Mark confused. His name is Mark Edward. And he's not to be confused with Mike Edward, John Edward, Mark Edwards, which is now available or Mike Edwards, who did Project Alpha with Manichek, or the politician John Edwards. So a lot of people get confused. Mark Edward was his, his middle name is Mark Edward, because his real name is Mark Wilson. And so of course he couldn't be Mark Wilson if he performed at the Magic Council, so he took his middle name, so he's John Edward. I mean, Mark, Mark Edward. <laughs> So this, let's see where we go with this, and I think that sounds very okay. 
It's a place for people to go for professional psychic advice about their future, about their job, about their love life, about anything that's important to them, and be treated like a member of the family. Okay, so that was Mark Edward. Back in the day when he was a psychic, uh, worked in the psychic business, he worked in it for 13 years or more, and um, that was the Psychic Friends Network. And <laughs> As he was working as a psychic uh, for many, many years, he was also on the board of Skeptic Magazine. So, now this is a slide that you, probably nobody has seen them. It's just very, very There are cool. wolves, thanks to the Psychic Friends Network, preying on the vulnerable and the gullible. Nobody has a true psychic here. Can you get a They don't know shit. <laughs> in my living room a year ago. Mark did not live to see that. That, that aired just a few weeks ago. Uh, advice. And I'll show you a bigger clip in a second. Okay. So, this, oddly enough, uh, Vince mentioned her to me today. So I'm going to show you a clip from Exploring the Unknown, 1999. This is, again, before I met Mark. This is a minute or so long. Don't mess with me now. Don't tell me that this is not real. Don't tell me that I'm a wacko. Don't tell me that I make this up because now I've been tested. But does a high degree of accuracy in a psychic reading verify psychic ability? Skeptics say no. It only proves that the psychic has mastered the tricks of the trade. I think you have to look at the evidence and the scientific claims very carefully. It's Mark case. Edward made his living as a medium for 10 years, but he confesses to having no psychic ability and is willing to expose others who don't. Technique is to go very fast, say a lot of things, so fast that the normal average person doesn't have a chance to respond or reconstruct what you just said. In order to demonstrate the methods phony psychics will utilize, we had Mark Edward offer free psychic readings at a shopping mall. Everyone who sat down with Mark believed they were with a real psychic. Hey, do you have a seat? I think when people go to a psychic, they expect to see some accurate information. So over the years, I've made my own little collection of uh, phrases that seem to fit. One of them is, why do I pick up Charles? Who's Charles? An older guy that lives across from me. I'm getting the name, like, Charles? I had an Uncle Charlie. Uncle, Uncle Charlie? Charlie? Yeah. Who's Charles? My husband. If it hits, fine. If it doesn't... Where are your name, Joseph? Very strong Joseph. You just tell the person, watch for it. Now, just think about it, okay? Joseph George, sometimes I'll hear a light, but you'll, you'll check. To Mark Edward, this special knowledge is just knowing how to pull off a convincing con. It's entertainment. I'm not a real psychic. Oh my god. Well, that's, 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 that's really weird. Hey, well, how did you come up with the names and names? I always say Charles. Oh. And as long as it is entertainment, <laughs> and it is put in those terms, I see nothing wrong with it. I'm not really a psychic. Are you not really? No. You kidding? Don't mess with me, though. Okay, don't mess with me. Now, some of you know Penn and Teller, he, they had a show called Bullshit, and Mark was on the first episode, the pilot episode. I don't have a clip of that, but um, I do have this. And when they put this together, there was a psychic that Mark busted. Her name is Rosemary Altea. Anybody know who Rosemary Altea is? You know why you don't know? Drew it is. Because he busted her ass right on Penn and Teller, and she was no more after that. So that's why. I'm Pam, this is my partner, Teller, and this is Bullshit. That's the name of our show. We're going to hunt down as many purveyors of bullshit as we can. Sure, we lie, cheat, swindle, we've been known to deal with a bit of bullshit ourselves. So some of you may ask, why pee on someone else's parade? One important difference we tell you we're lying. Tonight, we start with psychics who claim they can communicate with the dead. The only truly amazing thing about it is how many people believe. Okay, and I've been doing this for 10 years or more uh, with Mark and on my own with so a lot of times with teams of people who work with me to do these, to pull off these cons that we do to catch these people. And um, I don't necessarily believe, as Penn does, that. Um, there's a lot of reasons why people believe, and it isn't some simple thing you just show them the facts and they're going to learn. A lot of people, I believe, not only want to believe, but they need to believe. And when you're in grief, 
it is a voter, and it is very hard for people to um, to get out of that. And some people who were skeptical their entire lives may end up falling into this. So I don't like that blame the victim kind of thing, and, and that's very important to me. And also, I have come to know that a lot of mediums, uh, actually, the lower level ones, are being preyed on. I'm tired of this one. Part. Okay, so Mark was able to write a book about it, Psychic Blues. I had a couple on the table. It's all gone now. If you'd like to get the audio book, it's much longer, and it's read by Mark Edwards. So you can check it out. It's about his years in the 900 line, so he was able to uh, give us all this information about the psychic world from an insider's view. There has been um, some pushback on Mark in, this, in the magic world, not the mentalist world necessarily. And uh, there was one man, and he shall be named uh, nameless here at the moment, but many people know who he is, uh, has really been on his tails. And he's a, a, a magician who didn't like the idea that Mark went undercover and did this because, you know, Mark took money from being a psychic and so on. And, and um, so uh, he's an asshole, and that's fine. And um, <laughs> it's not fine, but you know, let him come at me. So um, this is where I'm starting to get involved. Uh, Mark and I met in 2009, and this is one of the things we started doing is instead of being uh, going to the media and having the media trying to educate people about these people, we tried, Mark said, psychics are performers. So if you could rattle them, like you would a magician or a musician or a uh, comedian, if you can rattle them, and it, all, the only person you're trying to rattle is that psychic, that's it, then they're going to have a a worse performance, they may not show up at the venue again, and so on. So one of the things he did, anybody remember Sylvia Brown? Sylvia Brown! Okay, so <laughs> one of the things he did is he made these little papers, and they had the word, most egregious names of the people uh, that uh, Sylvia Brown had fell from. And one of the things we did a, couple, a few different times is we went and we seated the audience, the bathroom, all different places with the most egregious things that Sylvia Brown had done, in the hopes that Sylvia Brown well, the people would Google the names and they would find her flaws, okay? But one of the reasons why he wanted to do this in this bright green color is because he wanted Sylvia Brown and her team to see people walking around in the audience sitting down with these green papers and they knew damn well that what's on them and they're like freaking out because they don't know, they know, they know somebody's in the audience is a skeptic and because they're not psychic. They don't know who we are. That we're invisible to them. That's why we're able to do this. So this is one of the things he did. And as I said, the, uh, there was some pushback with Mark, with mentalism, not mentalism, but the magic community being upset with Mark, uh, because the tricks that he was revealing were the tricks of the old days, you know, Billa and all kinds of things. But let me assure you, doing this as many years as I have, the tricks that the psychics are using are nothing like mentalism or what we do. Absolutely not. They're lazy. They're beyond lazy. And I'm going to show you some clips. So listen in, and you will see how lazy these people are today. And this is... Um, okay, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to read out, take out the tickets first. Yeah, remember one time... I need to know what career path I should really be taking, because I'm going to be going to college, and I need to know what I'm going to be most successful in. Design. Design. It's bigger. Who's Linda McConnell? Why, why does 
that video just for time, but this is a much longer video, and I was not there at this present. Mark was a performance artist. His degree was from Cal Arts, and his degree was in performance art. So he was, I'm not the type that necessarily would have done something like this. I'm more of a planner. I'm, I'm a different kind of personality, uh, but uh, we worked well together because he would just, he just got in that line. He had no idea what he was going to do. But anybody here who's seen Nightmare Alley, you know how he got out of that situation. And Sylvia Ben knew damn well who, what he was doing. The audience didn't need to know. But the rest of the, but Montel and Sylvia were freaked out. We heard later from people who knew her that she was really pissed off. And this was in LA. She never came back to play. She never did a show there again. She didn't die for another 10 years. Okay. This is uh, the, I'm going to show you a bit of this. Again, for time reasons, this is Sylvia Brown. She came to Saipan, uh, town. We're all there, all the skeptics. James Randy and everybody were there. So Mark said, let's go see Sylvia Brown is performing. And so we went outside. Now I ever see Sylvia Brown. Now I ever see Sylvia Brown. There's my son right there. Start young. Things flooding, floating, and it was great. 
And I think maybe you weren't there. But this is 2014, and then he got a call. You remember Uri Geller? So they were going to interview Uri Geller, and um, they flew Mark from Scotland to uh, to the UK, and I didn't get to go. So I didn't get to see this. Uh, but when did it become even more inappropriate? He said, I have barriers that he needed to get down. And the only way he could do that was by getting in my bed, and nothing would happen. Yes, and obviously at that point, alarm bells rang. Yeah. Yeah. You put a stop to it straight yeah. away. But the power that this man had over you mm -hmm. by sort of preying on your vulnerability. Yeah. Did you feel foolish? I do now. <laughs> yeah, very. And Mark, this is not something that surprised you a great deal. Is it wrong? No, I, I hear about these things all the time. So. But you were um, surrounded your life initially, grandfather magician, mm -hmm. it was magical around. Right. So at what point did you decide that you were going to set out to scam the scams? Well, as a mentalist, I realized the power of uh, charisma and suggestion. So I learned that the very simple suggestions that uh, a good performer, street performer or otherwise, or magician, can be very powerful. And I also learned about giving readings. People want answers. So uh, I saw how easy it was, and I saw some of the most egregious forms of this happening. And I decided, you know, if they can do this, I can do it. But I'm going to rise as high as I can, or as low, depending on how you look at it, and see what I can learn. So, so the whole like, idea was so that you could get in, infiltrate in a way, yes. and then write the book to, to right. expose it. Yes. Okay. So now we're getting into the harm. Um, this is more, you know, over time, um, instead of just giving to the performer, uh, but we, we started doing things that were, were going to really bug the psyche. And uh, this is us in LA for John Edward. Group of friends of mine down in LA. And it's exciting, but you know, you know. Well, I talk to dead people, they don't always talk back, but. <laughs> got some bills to pay, am I right? Yeah. yeah. Would you like to know the tricks, how it's done? Take a flyer. Take a flyer. And it involves, it might involve some travel. Does that make any sense? Yeah? Yes? Okay. Okay. I just want to talk to them. I just want them to be around me. I mean, there's going to be people all around you. And they're not spirit people. They're real people. Focus on those people. Don't worry about the ones on the other side. I feel great. Very empowering. Everyone should do this. At least once in their life. What did that lady say? He told her, she goes, what's going on in here? He said, a guy who says he can talk to the dead. She goes, oh, come on. So I would not let anyone stop me from losing my money. I will lose my money. Don't get, don't let facts get in the way. I'm, I'm going in here. won't stop me from walking in there and making John Edward get between me and my loved ones. Nobody. Okay, so now we're moving to Nat Geo. This I didn't get to attend. This is uh, Brain Games. You may have seen this. This is um, um, been doing tons of times. Oh my gosh. Oh, paranormal expert Mark Edward is helping these volunteers use a Ouija board to reach out to the spirit world. Grandpa, are you happy? And now this woman seems to be in a deep supernatural conversation with her deceased grandfather. Yes. That's good. Grandpa is happy. Are you starting to believe? So now how do you feel? I don't know. It makes me want to cry. I'm happy Aww. that he's happy. I'm a believer. More now? More now. Yeah, I doubted it a little bit at the beginning, but after doing it and experiencing it, like, I, there's no way I can doubt it now, I think. What I have here are some blindfolds. <laughs> 
Okay. Surely blindfolding our participants won't make a difference to the spirits. Okay. Or will it? I'm going to place the plan check in the center of the table. Now is going to be the moment of truth. Spirits, can you speak to us? Are you there? <laughs> right there. Kendall's ground thought. Show us that you're with us again. That's odd. Are the spirits drawing a blank? You know what year he died? Yes. Okay. What year did you die? Right there? Okay. Here's the second number. How do you think our new believers will react when they find out the spirits are having some technical difficulties? The third, one more. One more number. Okay. You can take your blindfolds off. Now, what year did he pass away? 2010. So, this should be conclusive evidence at this point. Now, the spirits did a fantastic job without the blindfolds, but with the blindfolds on, this is what I got when you went for the date from Grandpa. It was so clear before, right? Here's what you got. You got a J and a K, and you got three blanks that were on the middle of the wood. There was no, no numbers here, here, or here. I love how he crosses them out. This is so insane. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll show you part of this. This is Adam Reed's Everything. In 2017, I was in the room next to this while it was being filmed. These people are amazing. Why? Uh, I think he owned she's, the book. She's the Jersey shirt short. And I saw it once. That's it. That's it. He wants me to tell you he cherishes those moments that he loves you. Boom, shut up. I'm done. That was amazing. How do you explain that? It's simple. She was doing a cold reading. Ah, uh, who this? You know the spirit. I did not summon you. Okay, can we cut? This is Mark Edward. He's a magician who went undercover as a psychic medium to research how they scam people. I used to do everything she does for a living, and I can tell you exactly how it's done. Cold reading is a series of questions and statements that mine you for information without you even knowing it. Okay, so, so it gets a little longer. I mean, what? it's obviously a lot longer than that. Why? Uh, I think he owned the book. And I saw it once. That's it? Oh, I bet. That's it? I'm sure it isn't. Ah, whatever. Why? Uh, Sorry. I think he owned the book. He owned the book? Okay. This is where I start really getting active. And um, Mark was approached by... We, we met, a, he knew somebody from the, who was writing for the New York Times, was writing, uh, and asked us if we ever get a hot read, to please let him know, and he wants to be involved. And I said, challenge accepted, let's find a hot read. That's my speciality, is hot reads. So this is uh, kind of more what we're known for, it's called Operation Pizza Bowl. Mark named everything, you guys. So Operation Pizza Bowl. And I cut this way back, but it is, it should summarize the Operation Pizza Roll. And this is the, you'll see. Operation Pizza Roll started in March of 2017. And it mainly started because the New York Times wanted to make sure that they got a hot read. Because you can catch a cold read on the site pretty easily, and I've done it many, many times. Hot reads are really difficult to prove. So. I can't just stand up in a psychic show and say, you're a fraud and you're phony. It does nothing. It, 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 you just, you cause a disturbance and you're thrown out. People will ask, you ever have naysayers or skeptics? I mean, I, I do in probably the world, but those people really don't come to see me because they wouldn't, you know, they're not going to come. So I explained you're going to create these pages and you're going to interact with each other for about 10 days. And during that 10 days, you're going to create a lot of different characters. Two of the characters are going to go to the psychic event. One is going to be myself and one of them is going to be Mark Edward. I said, you are going to create a backstory that I won't know anything about and Mark won't know anything about. And then you just look like you're real people talking to each other. The idea was to try and have something that was bulletproof because a psychic could say, maybe I was just reading their mind what they were thinking. 
I've worked with psychics for long enough to know they have an answer for everything. And unless you can choke them with their own bait, they, you're not going to get anywhere. So what we had to do is double blind it by making sure that some of the information that was put on the Facebook pages, Susan and I didn't know. So when we went to the, the show, we were only given a very limited amount of facts. They put together a backstory for myself and for Mark. And they said that I'm Susanna Wilson and I'm going to attend this event with my husband, Mark Wilson. I want to contact my dead twin brother, Andy, who died of pancreatic cancer a couple years before. And then Mark's story, they created saying that Mark didn't have a great relationship with his dad. And years ago, his father had died of heart problems. And now Mark's about the age his dad was at the time that he started having heart problems. So Mark's been really thinking about it a lot and having some tests done. So he wants to be in contact with his dad. And he's stressed out about these tests he's had. So we're only told that little bit of information. The rest of it was filled out by dozens of details and photographs and pictures of cats and dogs. The idea was if the, if the psychic took that bait, then that would be, that would show conclusively that they used a Facebook because we didn't even know what he was talking about. I'm getting a brother who wants to reach out to his twin. I tentatively raised my hand, you know, I'm really nervous. Who's Andy? That's my brother. That's your brother. I feel like you and Andy, I feel like you always kind of share this energy between you where you can kind of like hear each other's thoughts and things like that. And I'm dabbing at my eyes and pretending I'm crying and Mark scanning me with paper because I'm like supposedly really hot and just really nervous. Somebody's making me aware of cancer. Is this your brother? Did he have cancer? And I get big hair, which to me would show the stomach or pancreas. Do you understand? Yes. Then he starts telling me about things that I have no knowledge of whatsoever. Who's Maria? Um, who's Buddy? And also he's bringing this up and he brought it up three times and he's like, Maria. Maria, Maria, do you know who that is? Because he's bringing up Maria. And uh, Buddy, who's that? We don't know what's on those Facebook pages. We just know that we're trying to agree with him on everything he says. And that became a little interesting because we had to sit there and say, yes, yes, and we didn't know what, what he was talking about. So your dog is here. Must be your dog because there's a dog here. And then he goes to Mark. Your dad passed from heart problems. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, I don't want to scare you, but... Have you had your heart checked? And he talks to Mark about heart disease and how he's been, he had some tests done and he's really worried about the tests and how there's a lot of distance between him and his father. I do know that I can tell you with your dad because this is what he's telling me. He wants to take ownership for the fact that he was pretty hard on you growing up. Which is what we knew. And then he goes into other things like who is Steve? There's a gentleman in spirit coming through Steve. Who quit smoking? Did he quit uh, smoking? Mark and I just had to kind of just go with it. Okay, so that's hugely longer than this and not just the video. There was tons of things that happened that I absolutely didn't have time to show you. Fast forward a little, was that made the New York Times? Fast forward a little bit and um, during the pandemic, Thomas John, who uh, we heard about today, <laughs> uh, anyway, he uh, did readings. He did a an event on Zoom for children, five to twelve, four hundred dollars a pop. So uh, this is more my. Are you guys more upset about the children or the four hundred dollars? I don't know. But, <laughs> so um, I infiltrated it, and um, Mark helped. But now I'm becoming much more comfortable in my skin, and this is operation onion ring. I'm not going to show it to you. You'll have to go and look it up. It's quite long, and there's reasons. There's a podcast. There's all kinds of stuff you can read about it. But um, let's just say we infiltrated it uh, with children, children, and we caught him hot reading yet again. And uh, this is the just very brief. I'm going to show you. Um, this is uh, the vice thing that came out. It was filmed in my living room a year ago, and then Mark has died and didn't see this part. So this is just a very um, we're looking back, it's called uh, Dark Side of the 90s. Here I am, I'm, I'm talking to some woman about her chakras. He's talking about these years as a nightmare cycle. The line there. At the same time, I'm like cleaning my toilet at home, you know? There are a lot of people who are going through hard times that are lonely. 
that this would be the person that they would call and at the end of the month they'd end up with telephone bills for thousands of dollars. It was a nasty situation and it ended up hurting a lot of needy people. We do need to talk to each other. We just shouldn't have to pay a psychic to do it. Despite the fall of the Psychic Friends Network, copycat telepsychics have also found a new home online. So they're still making a huge profit, and they're still taking advantage of people. As of 2018, an estimated 95,000 psychic businesses are operating in the U.S., bringing in about $2 billion per year. But after publishing a whistleblowing account in 2013 of his time with the Psychic Friends Network, Mark Edward has made it his life's mission to expose phony psychics. My girlfriend and I do psychic stings, which means we will target a specific psychic in order to trap them. We got written up in the New York Times magazine. What we want to do is show the world just how nefarious this practice is and how it can destroy lives, and really there is a harm to it. Believe it or not, the media sure. still doesn't know that there's harm. Okay, so this is the last thing I'm going to show you, pretty much. And this is seven minutes, and this is hard to watch. It's unedited. This is a sting that I've been working on. Mark died, so I didn't really have time. It's called Operation Dill Pickle. I have not released it. It is, um, this is footage that you're seeing that is not available anywhere to see. And I've only kind of blurred the faces out. This is what I'm more specializing in now. It's seven minutes long and almost it's the end of my presentation. And what I want you to understand is this is what really happens. What we see on TV is not what is really going on in the real world. This is typical of what you'll see. So pay attention and, um, and see what it is that we're dealing with now. Hello, how are you doing, Trudy? I'm doing okay. Okay, is something going on with your feet? Uh, yeah. Go to the doctor, you know that. Uh huh. Yeah, and it's it's circulatory, right? It's circulation, but something going on with the toes. With your toe, is there is, is there arthritis in your toes or something? I don't know if it's arthritis. All I know is they swell up a little bit. Yeah, he wants you to make sure you take you're taking care of that. Okay. All right. Okay. And um, you're troubled about something. Something is bothering you. That's Hank, right? Hank is your... Uh, why yeah, I suppose you haven't read to me a bunch of times. Hank, um, Hank, Hank says, talk to me. What's tr There's something going on. And I want to... Hold on. Before I do that, your cousin. You have that cousin, a male cousin. Something's going on with him. Okay. Is there something going on with him? Well, he's in the process of moving. Yeah. Like building a house, not a house. So he's moving away from me. And is that what's troubling you that he's moving yeah, away? Yeah, it bothers me a little bit that they're moving. Because when you got on today, Hank said to me, talk to her about the cousin, the male. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. So I'm kind of relieved. I was worried it was hell. But that makes sense. But you're upset about it. Yeah, because they're gonna, it's, it, he's right three doors down from me now. They decided all of a sudden she wants to build this house and she's they're leaving, so yeah, it's like really and and because I see them every single day. Well, you know what you have to do. Which is what he told you the last time. You have to make some friends. Yeah, I know. I know. You have to go down to that community. Remember he talked about the gate? Mm -hmm. on, he wants you to go to the community uh building. Yeah, no, I'm getting more involved with the community, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you involved in some kind of drive for children for the holidays? Are you doing something? He's yes. talking about you doing something. He's really proud of that. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't remember the disease that took your sister, but he says, look and see if there's a, a local there where you can you can be involved. I don't remember what she had, your sister. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so, so he'd like you to get involved with, you know, the charity and okay. make volunteer work because he says you will have to refill. You, you, you're going to have free time on your hands. Uh -huh. Excuse me, and then you're not going to do well with that. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, he's around you. He keeps you company. 
still eating ice cream. <laughs> Love that ice cream. He does. I don't remember the flavor, but no, it's vanilla. No, <laughs> he's showing me vanilla. Chocolate's my favorite, so I probably ignored that. But he is showing me ice cream and that he's sitting at, you have a small table in your kitchen. Is there a small table against a wall in your kitchen? Uh -huh. he's Every table is against the wall. He's showing me that he's sitting at that table eating. And it, I will tell you it is a hot fudge sundae. Like, he's really going into detail. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But, um, do you have a question, Trudy? Uh, not really. Uh, just just trying to keep busy, and that's about it. Getting more, I'm getting more involved with my, I'm on my board, and my HOA and all that stuff, so I'm, you know, and now I'm getting involved with charity, so. Yeah, he really is pushing the charity work with children, though, specifically with children, and he'd like to see you involved around the holidays doing something, you know, like a, a drive, a toy drive, something. We are, we're doing what they call a parade of trees, and, and it's, it's going to be, it's a big deal, so it's, it's yeah. but we're having toys for kids and stuff. He's actually annoyed with your cousin. Okay. He is I can see him in that way, yeah. Yeah. You know, annoying. Like they have a perfect setup. What are they doing that for? Like, I know, like it's it's insane. I mean, you're at that age, you don't build a house. I'm sorry, right. and it's a lot of activation, and it's like really crazy. Yeah, and and he feels it's like a double loss for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is. So he says you're going to have to get my pieces. They're not going to be so happy then. Oh, I know they're not. I know. I know what already. Yeah. She's she's gonna feel cut off over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. It's a big mistake, I think. Uh, but she wants to build her own house. So, so this, this is a twenty minute drive for you. It's about yeah, it's about twenty minutes. Yeah, this is a drive there. Oh yeah, I'll visit. I'll visit. It's just so different than just going up and up, you know. Right. Being it, every day. Yeah. He says part of that is good because it's gonna force you to step outside of your comfort zone. Uh -huh. and, yeah. um, uh, were you thinking of taking a painting course? Um, I don't know if I want to do painting. I was thinking of doing something, but I wasn't sure. But yeah. I, was looking, I was looking at it, yeah. Yeah, he showed me painting. He wants you to do it. Oh, okay. He says, Trudy, you, you gotta, gotta do it. Uh -huh. and I, I, have, yeah, I do have a question. She wants to give me a listing on the house. I don't know if I want it. It's, it's like really crazy. I'm like fighting it. For you to sell it? Uh huh. He says, don't touch it. Okay. Don't touch it. Yeah, it's really bothering I knew as soon as I saw your face, you told me, look at my tree. Um, if, if you're going to do anything's going to go sour on this deal, they're going to blame you and it'll cost you more. That's what I figured. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got what you got. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, okay. Uh, well, he's in full agreement with you. Okay. Your father is also, he's also shaking his head, don't touch it. He's going okay. to lose more. If it goes bad, they're going to blame you. Uh -huh. And I, I feel like it's not going to be smooth. Okay. But if I maybe, and the truth is, you know, if you read a newspaper, you know right now we're entering a tough financial time. So if you're going to get involved, and if it's not a little cash deal, if anything goes wrong, because what they're showing me is that papers are going to get done and then undone. So maybe they're going to sell it, and then the mortgage is going to fall through. Uh -huh. so I feel like it's not going to be a clean deal, and you don't want to get in the middle of that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. No, it's fine. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow night. Yes, you'll see me tomorrow night. <laughs> All right, thank you. Make sure you go on the Facebook because we put yeah, it. Yeah, I saw that to read to see other people. Yeah, right. so, okay. There's homework. Trudy is in our class, where, uh, our mediumship class. So, hey, Kathy, we're going to do you next. Okay, so this has not been released. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm sorry it's been so long. Um, but I want you to see the whole thing to see what it's really like these days. These are not edited clips that you can see. 
John Edward, Tyler Henry, Teresa Caputo, or anything like that. This is what's really going on. This woman is being manipulated. Her grief, she's lonely. Getting financial advice from a medium who's telling her not to sell her house. When probably she should be selling her house. I don't know, but we don't know. But the point is, is that this is what's happening to almost all women. The victims are almost entirely women. I also, in this um, sting, I get a repeat. And um, of course, I have an accent and I have my video turned off and they give me a reading and I ask medical questions because I want to see if she'd answer them. She does. So she gives me medical advice. So I have like two minutes more and um, this is my YouTube channel. It's called Psychics Explain. What I do is I take videos like these and I go into great depth detail, beyond detail, to explain what's actually going on for people. And if you have a hard time understanding, remembering my YouTube channel, you can um, just go to Psychic Sex Explained. If it's easier for you to remember, Psychics Explained, get it, see, somebody else came up with that. And, uh, I, oh, I wanted to point out that um, that is me, in that picture that you see there, I had cancer at one point, and I just had no hair, and Mark dressed me up like mouse brought to and then, right? <laughs> I had so much fun. I had the best all together. And uh, um, when Mark got that reading from Thomas John, Mark did not know he had cancer. So the psychic did not see it. So again, the harm. People say, he's saying, go get your heart checked. But what Mark needed to do is get his prostate checked because that killed him a few years later. So this is my YouTube channel. I uh, mean, my, my website, you get a lot of information there. It's called About Time Project. I do a lot of things besides psychics. And I'll leave you, I think, with this last little video. It's only a few seconds long. This is Mark. <laughs> Frolicking in Scotland. He was seizing. He was a dread.